everyone, and welcome to this, another episode of 2D Fundamentals. My name is Kisanas. In the last episode, we took a brief look at Spine, a really basic introduction to Spine, just so you know exactly what we'd be using. In this episode, guys, I'd like to actually go through and repeat our ball roll, our constant ball roll, using Spine. Alright, let's get started. Okay guys, so we're starting off here in Photoshop and basically I've only got a couple of layers. All we have is a couple of assets that we want to actually export to Spine. In this situation, I want to export a ball and I want to export a background. My background is 1920 by 1080. That's the size of the, of the file that I want to produce at the end. And my ball is on a completely separate layer. All right, and basically what's going to happen is we're going to take each of these layers, we're going to make a PNG file, and we're going to we're going to convert it to an appropriate uh, usage for spine. All right, to do so is really really easy. Uh, on the actual Esoteric Spine website, you're going to find the appropriate scripts that are going to allow you to do so. Under File, once you have the the script installed, under File, you're going to have this Photoshop layers to PNG. Once you have that and you run it, you're going to run this brand new uh, this brand new script. And basically, what it does is it's going to convert it to an appropriate JSON file. And that JSON file is going to allow you to go through afterwards and build yourself the appropriate spine files. Okay, what you're going to want it, it's going to basically take each one of these layers, it's going to convert it to a PNG, uh, and it's going to see right layers as PNGs. It's going to convert it to a PNG, and it's going to then be available within Spine. You're going to give it a name where it's located. You're going to give it a name for the JSON file, and the JSON file is going to have a, it's going to have an appropriate name for what you're trying to do here. You might call it ball roll or something else. Uh, and then you're going to go through and you're going to open that whole entire thing up at Spine. I'm not going to actually go through and click the buttons right now. I'll let you guys go through here. Fill in the appropriate stuff, uh, add in the appropriate size if you want to come at 100%, etc., and then say OK. Once you do, it's going to produce what we need in Spine. OK? Let's go take a look at that now. OK, guys, so here we are in Spine. So we've saved everything over, everything's been converted appropriately. Now we want to open it up. So right now I've got myself a blank screen, I've got myself a blank empty project. I'm going to go over here to Spine, and I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say import data. Right? When I go to import data, it's going to ask me where is my particular JSON file. And that's exactly what we built in, in the previous part of this episode. In Photoshop, we built a JSON file. If I go to browse, I can find the actual particular assignment. Here it is, assignment number one. And when I say OK, it's going to open up a brand new project. I've got that clicked. My scale set to one. Everything's the way I want it. OK. And it's going to open up. Now, when I do so, it always does this for me. <laughs> Maybe it's not going to do it for you. I'm not sure. If I head over here to images, uh, I can actually choose exactly where these images are. When I browse, let me try and find these. I, all I'm looking for is my actual image directory. All right, here it is. When I say select folder, all right, everything gets brought in properly. Okay, so this is exactly the way we left it in Photoshop. It looks exactly the same as we did in Photoshop. We've got ourselves our background and our ball. Both of them are in different layers. Okay, we currently have only a root bone. The root bone is located at the very, very corner. Uh, we didn't set it up differently in Photoshop. You can, but we didn't set up differently in Photoshop. So right now, my root is located in the very, very corner of my screen. Okay, so that's great. Basically, what we want to do is we want to set up a a bone or some. This this is, spine is entirely based on on animation that that's done on joints. All right, so we have to provide a joint on uh, for this particular object. All right, that's the best way that it works. We can go through and we can rotate this. Oh, I'm rotating the wrong thing. We can go through and we can rotate this. All right, by itself. I don't I don't know if we can animate it by itself. Can we? Can I animate this? No, I can't. All right, so I just want to check that. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go back to actually our setup. I just want to check and see first. All right. So yeah, we definitely want to set up a joint in this particular uh, in this particular object. If we take a look at not at the background, if we take a look at the ball itself, the center of the ball is right here. And as far as I've been able to tell, there's no way to place a joint directly in the center of this particular object. I don't I don't think there is. That might require more research on my own part, but I don't think there is. All right. So what I want to do is I want to add a brand new bone that's going to be precisely in the center of this ball so my rotation works appropriately. Okay, I'm going to go in, I'm currently in setup, I'm going to go in here to create and this allows me to create the new bone structure. Alright, if I just click right here, let's say right, uh, right here, 
right there, I guess, looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good to me. Let's take a look. If I click on this, does it tell me? That doesn't look so bad. All right, so right now I've got this new bone, and right now everything is outside of it. Everything's outside of the hierarchy. I'm going to double click to rename this bone, and I'm just going to call this thing here, I'm going to call it a ball a center of gravity. All right, that's what I'll call it for now. So my ball center of gravity. And currently the ball center of gravity is located within the root hierarchy. Now what I want to do is I want to come over to this section here in my tree. I want to grab this attachment and I want to drag the attachment onto the ball center of gravity. All right, so now my ball, my, my, my ball itself, as well as the ball image, the ball attachment, the ball image are both located under the hierarchy of the ball center of gravity. Okay, and that is the extent of what I need to do to actually be able to do this exercise as far as a setup, as far as a, as a, as a control structure is concerned. Okay, let's take a look at animating. Okay, to animate, all we have to do is head over here to setup, and we're going to click setup once, and that's going to put us into the animation window. Okay, we are now in the animation window. And in this case here, we want our ball to move across the screen at a constant rate. That's what we want to do. Our ball is going to move across the screen at a constant rate. All right, let's go over here and make sure we've got ourselves the ball joint selected so we can actually do the animation. And what I want to happen is at frame zero, I'm going to simply translate this ball off screen like this. All right, it's going to start off off screen like that. And you can see that down here, my translation option has turned orange. I've also got an orange indicator over here on this ball center of gravity, an orange indicator key there. Now, to key this, to make sure that I've got a keyframe set up right here at frame zero, I'm simply going to hit the key button. It's going to turn red, and now down here we can see we actually have a translation key that is available in the uh, in the timeline down here. Okay. Now, what I want to do animation on in spine is done at 30 frames per second and I want my ball to take two seconds to move across the entire screen so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my time my, my timeline all the way down here all right till I'm at till I'm at frame 60 that's two seconds of animation one second two seconds and at frame 60 I'm gonna simply drag my ball to the other side off screen let's say right about here all right and once again it's turned orange and I can simply key it all right so now I've got a key at both ends. I could have turned on auto key and done this if I had wanted to, but like I said, I think I said this in, the, in a previous video, I don't like using auto key. I like to go through and manually key things. Okay, so let's take a look at something here. If I click on the, the keyframe down here, what I've got is in here in this graph editor. If you're not seeing that, you can go to views and you can turn on your, your graph, all right? Down here, I've got myself a, a, a a slope or I got myself a line that goes between these two points and by default it's going to be at a, it's gonna be linear like this all right I've got a constant slope all right and a constant slope a constant slope across this this line means or across this whatever you want to call it curve I guess we'll call it a curve across this curve this constant slope being a straight line means that my actual object is moving at a constant rate all right if I hit play here it's moving across the screen at a constant rate and I'm really hoping it's actually moving across the screen at a constant rate on in this video as well <laughs> I'm not sure if it's going to. Uh, I'm not sure with the recording software how well this, this play button is going to work. I've got my fingers crossed that it's going to work really well. Anyway, we can see that the ball itself is moving at a constant rate. If I wanted to change it so this ball was going faster or slower, what I could do is I could double. I could just click on here. I click on this little button in the curve, and this gives me two spline options. I now have spline handles available to me here. All right. By adjusting these splines, I'm actually affecting the way this curve works. You can see that down here at, at the beginning of the frame, at the first frame, it's actually moving at a very slow rate. It speeds up to almost a constant motion and a constant uh, speed, and then it slows down as it comes in here. That's what the change in slope means. A change in slope means there's a change in acceleration, either a negative or, or positive acceleration. All right. If you want, you can drag these handles and you can change that slope. So let's say I wanted this thing to, uh, let's make it really, really obvious. Let's make it like this. I made it go too far. Um, and let's drag this one here way over as well, way over like this. So you can see now what I've got here is I've got a very slow moving ball, then it speeds up really quickly and slows down again. If I hit play again over here, boom, boom, my ball goes across. You can see how it's going across rather quickly now. All right, in this case here, we are looking for constant motion. So I'm gonna turn back on the linear, the linear option within the graph, okay? So once again, I've got myself constant motion. Now, 
The next thing I have to do is rotation. All right, and and rotation doesn't work exactly the same way as translation does. It doesn't work this easily. Uh, let's say I wanted to start off. I'm just going to hit this this button right away. So right away I start off with zero rotation on my ball. Uh, so right now I've got zero rotation on it. You'd think that I could scroll across here and looking at the distance this is traveling uh, and the circumference of this ball, it looks like it's about two and a half times, all right? About two and a half times the distance of the circumference of this ball. So you'd like to be able to go over here and write something like, uh, you know, 780 or something like that to say I want to rotate uh, two full rotations and then some, all right? If I key this right now, it's going to automatically go to not the value I wanted. It's at 60. Watch what happens when I scrub this back and forth. I'm getting a very slight rotation, even in the wrong orient, like the wrong direction. I'm getting a very slight rotation. I'm not getting the 780 that I thought I was going to get. All right, so let me just dump this rotation right here. I'm just going to select it and delete it. Boop. All right, so that rotation's gone. What that means, basically the way that, that Spine works is Spine is expecting you to put in uh, some value below 360, okay? Some value below 360, and it expects you to put it in the appropriate uh, direction as well. So if I wanted this ball, let's say that I thought this ball should travel, let's say I think this ball should travel at 10 frames, let's say I think this ball should rotate 120 degrees, all right? I want the ball to be traveling, rotating in this direction, all right, so I can type in here, let's say I put in here 120. Now watch what happens. I'm going to put in here 120, and I'm going to key it. Now the problem is the ball is moving in the opposite direction. I can, if I want in here, put negative 120. All right, that's automatically going to default to 240. 360 minus 120 is 240. All right, and when I key it, boom, and I scrub it now, I can see my ball is moving in the appropriate manner. Now. Let's continue this idea. I don't think this is going to be the proper amount looking at the circumference of the ball and the distance traveling. I don't know if it's the proper amount, but let's check and see. I'm going to move ahead to frame 20, and once again, I'm going to add 120 to this, or subtract, I guess, 120. So I'm going to make this 120, bam, and I'm going to key it. And then at frame 30, so after one second, I'm assuming that it's going to be all the way to zero once again. All right, now I'm going to key it. It's going to travel the shortest distance from that location. So at 240, so it, it rotated 240, so it's going to go this way to get to 240, it's going to go this way to get to 120, it's going to go, you know, the appropriate way to get to get to the, the, the rotation that I want. Let's take a look at it now. That doesn't look so bad as far as timing is concerned. It might be a little bit off, there might be a little slippage, but it doesn't look so bad. That doesn't look so bad. I think I'm going to leave it for now. I'm going to continue this pattern along. So at, at 30 plus 30 plus 10, uh, once again, I'm going to be at 240, and I'm going to key it. I'm going to go 10. I'm going to go to 120, and I'm going to key it. And lastly, I'm going to go to frame 60. I'm going to set this to 0, and I'm going to key it. All right? Now let's take a look. Let's, let's just try. I'm not going to scrub it. I'm just going to hit play and see. Let's say I like what I've done here. Once again, we're going to want to go to Spine, and we're going to want to go to Export Data. All right, and and I'm going to try push this button. It might shrink everything, and it's going to suck if it does. Okay, it didn't. Good. <laughs> we're going to export data, and we have a couple of different options here. In this case here, I'm just going to simply uh, export a QuickTime video. All right, I can go through and I can set up my frames per second. I can set up my quality, etc. All right, and this is going to build for me a QuickTime video. Now, once again, we've got ourselves a problem. When we actually spit this out. When we actually spit it out of uh, out of uh, spine, what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with a this distance because our ball started outside of the loop here and our ball started outside of the loop here. We're going to end up rendering this entire area, all right, the entire area around the ball and everything else, and that's not good. That's not what you want to show. You don't want to show the entire frame. Obviously, we only want to show the area around the background here. That's all we want to show is the ball coming in frame and leaving. You're going to have to take this quick time afterwards, and you're going to have to put it into a nonlinear editor like Premiere or something like that. You're going to have to you're going to have to uh, mask out the area you want to render, and then render it once again to get your finalized images. All right, guys. So let's take a look at mine. Okay, this is the one I did. You can see that it's rolling across the screen at a constantly at a constant rate. The rotation is accurate, or as, as best I can do with my eye. I did. You could obviously go through and do mathematics and calculate exactly how far this was supposed to go. But in this case here, we eyeballed it. It looks pretty good. I don't really see any slippage here. It looks like the ball is rolling across the screen. All right, guys.
All right, so I really hope you liked that. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to follow along. For this exercise, guys, I want you to go now. I want you to actually make yourself a constantly rolling ball that travels across the screen at a constant rate over two seconds. All right, enters the frame, exits the frame over two seconds. All right, guys, good luck, enjoy, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.